Welcome back to another video guys. So the video is going to be about shopping campaigns today. Chances are if you're running shopping campaigns it's holding you back or there's some things you don't entirely know about. So in this video I'm going to walk you through exactly step by step to build out high performing shopping campaigns that actually work and actually convert. So stick with me guys this is no guesswork, no fluff, just a proven strategy and structure that works so let's dive in. Okay guys, so we're in our Google Ads account now. We're gonna head over to campaigns uh, and then hit new campaign. So that's just simply this blue cross here. Hit that, new campaign. Google's then gonna ask us, what campaign objective do you want? If you guys have seen my search video, again, we don't use guidance on this. I'm your guidance, so we don't need any of that. It's basically just trying to limit you on what you can do. So we're just gonna go ahead and click the last one. Create campaign without guidance. And then as you can see here, we're now presented with all the options we can be. So for example, performance max, you have video, shopping, display ads. But today this video is gonna be about shopping ads. So we're gonna hit shopping. And then as you scroll down, use these conversion goals for campaign performance. So I would recommend you have purchases set up as your um, campaign goal. And that should already be set up in your conversions. Uh, I will have a completely separate video for that as I will in the Merchant Center too. So be sure to watch those videos, guys, very important for shopping feeds. So we're gonna leave this as it is on purchases. And then as we scroll down, to advertise products on your website, you must select a merchant account. So this is where your merchant comes in. So you already have to have a merchant account set up. Like I said, I'll link the video in the description if you guys wanna watch it on how to, how to create a merchant account. Um, but I've already set mine up here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit my account. Okay, so now that that's selected, select a campaign subtype. So keep in mind it can be changed later. Yes, but we wanna choose the right one to begin with. So Google, I love this off the bat. It's just gonna give you a performance max. So this is, this is Google's new campaign type they're pushing. They're really wanting everyone to use perform performance max campaign. So we're just gonna ignore that and we're gonna hit the second one called standard shopping campaign and then continue. Okay guys, so we're in the campaign build out section of the video now. The first thing it's gonna ask us is what do we wanna call the campaign? I like to be very structured with my campaigns. I like to have a nice, easy, readable uh, section to all my campaigns. So for example, you're running 30 ads, 40 ads on your account. You don't wanna be overwhelmed. You want it all to be very structured. So we're, all we're gonna do is call it a shopping campaign. So SC and then our campaign name afterwards dog beds and then that's that next thing is our bidding strategy so I've got a whole different video on this coming up I recommend you guys watching that but I talk a little bit about it now I think if you're running your first campaign you should never use target row as you've got no data target row as always works better once you've been running your campaign for a while and it can feed off for that data and really push your campaign to that next level so we're not going to use that now we're actually going to use maximize clicks you can use manual CPC too, which I do recommend. So go, going forward, I recommend you either use these two, but today we're gonna to use maximize clicks. And then you can also set a cost per click bid limit too, which we're gonna go ahead and do of five pounds. So the budget, set your average daily budget for the campaign. I'm not gonna recommend you know anything specific really but all i'm going to say is if you've done a bit of research you need at least 15 clicks from this campaign a day to get any sort of valuable data so whatever that is in your industry kind of figure that out so for us we're going to need this campaign budget to be at least 50 pounds per day so i wouldn't recommend starting anything lower than getting any 15 clicks a day so otherwise you won't be able to work with it so Make sure you're getting those clicks in from that budget and then you should be able to work with that data and then scale up from there. So that's that. Next one, customer acquisition. We're gonna leave this as that. Next part, campaign priority. So this is basically if you're running multiple shopping campaigns, do you want this to have a priority over a different one or do you want it to be sat in the middle somewhere? So we're just gonna go ahead and assume this is our first shopping campaign. So. We're going to leave this on low, but obviously when you guys are running more and more and you have a higher priority, you can change these. So just leave that as it is. It doesn't really matter. Uh, search network. So 
I like to keep this ticked off here, the partners bit anyway, so you kind of just waste your money over time, I think. It could, it, it can work and it has worked for me in the past, but we're just gonna go ahead and turn it off because it's Google's partner sites that it's just a variable we don't need to be on. So I, I always just like to narrow the variables when you start out anyway, and then we can expand once we've got some, uh, some data. So we're gonna go ahead, untick that. Devices, I will show you the device optimization uh, towards the end of the video because that's once you go back into the campaign and do a few little tweaks. So I'll show you that at the end of the video, guys. Okay, so for the location options, we're gonna go down and select the second one. So people in, regularly or included locations. So all this means is you want to target the people actually in those locations. The first one, people in, regularly and or have shown interest or all that means is literally they've shown interest in being in that location. So we don't want to advertise to people who aren't there. So make sure you guys hit that second option. It's very important. Start and end dates. We're actually not going to hit an end date for this. I don't recommend you guys ever do that. So don't have an end date. Keep that as, as it is. Okay, guys. So we're in the product group section of the ads now. We want to make sure we get this bang on. So all we have to do is go in here where it says all products. There's going to be like a plus arrow. This means add subdivision. All we're gonna do now is just segment out our ads, make sure we've got different categories for loads of products and then products within that too. So all this means is just being a bit more organized. It's an efficient way to control our bids as well and to show the data. So let's go ahead, hit subdivision. So in here, we're gonna be showing product type. So all we're gonna do here is hit this and then continue to edit bids and then save. So all this is going to do is segment it. So all this is going to do is segment it off for us. So what I like to do as well is turn off everything else in all products as well. So all this means is even though you've segmented the fine art section to everything else, it still means everything else is going to show. So you don't want that. What we're trying to do here is be organized. So let's go ahead, always turn this off and then you can actually just add more categories and subcategories of products as you go on. So guys, what I like to do as well under this category, I like to have the products underneath. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. So all you have to do, go here to this plus arrow and you're going to add a subdivision. So instead of the product type this time, it's actually going to be under item ID. So go ahead, hit item ID. And then as you can see, the products are going to be listed here that you've already set up in your merchant account. So continue to edit bids, save that, and then it's gonna break it down under the category here and give you your product. So this is a better way to do it. It's a better way to kind of work on your bids too. So for example, if you're running manual CPC, you can change the bids a lot easier. You can see what products are getting the clicks, impressions. In my opinion, it's just a, a way nicer structure to your campaign. Guys, I've created a thing called PPC Academy. The link's gonna be put in the description below. It's a completely free private community to sign up to. It's basically where we're all gonna share our wins together, ask one another questions, and you'll learn directly from me and a lot of experienced media buyers in there, whether you know, you're know you stuck on a keyword strategy or you just simply want a second set of eyes on a, on a question about Google Ads. So, like I said, guys, sign up for free below. Link is in there, and uh, I will see you guys down there.